something. And God will do two things tonight. Y Dios va a hacer dos cosas. That demon that's assigned to your life, he'll pick him up and throw him out of here. Ese demonio que está asignado, él lo recoge, lo And then he'll minister his power to your body. I came to get this message to the people. Yo vine a traer este mensaje a la gente. And no devil in hell is going to stop it. But when you stand up straight with your shoulders back and have a clean look in your eye, the fire of God down in your spirit, and he sees that you know who you are, the devil will back off for free. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, every demon spirit assigned to your life, it backs off for free today in the name of Jesus Christ. The woman who destroys. Let's talk about it. All okay, right. let's just jump right in. We don't have a ton of time. Forgetting is not a good thing. Why? People forget all the time. But it. I just, this is one you know, of the we things just, we never really I, talked I about the last I time we forget. did the woman forget. who destroys. Yeah. But this is a biblical principle. It most certainly is. And I think there's a special dose put on women to forget. Mm -hmm. If As it, like a maybe, coping mechanism? Maybe there's like science behind it i'm not quite sure uh but my my oh by the way i had to re-pierce my hole i know that's awful that's awful now they don't match now that's i look like a tell. crackhead nobody nobody can so tell. anyway what happens i feel like um women have a tendency to forget yeah probably if if there was a study the woman is prone to forget twice as much as a man wow well or and then there's there's people there's men probably on here that are like no they don't <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. no they don't forget because they be bringing stuff up that happened in 1998 that's it it's just one it or the happened other. in 1998 at this, at this point, one or the other I will tell you something I'm not going to forget and there's nothing the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun right and so if we're doing cyclical like stuff and things that have already been spoken about in the in the Bible then we ought to take some time and effort into remembering. You have to remember. Uh, there's a couple of stories that I have about this, but one in particular was just yesterday when we pulled out the stops for Check the News and we aired the very first Check the News that we ever did. Mm. And I came home and I was talking to Abel about it. And I was like, man, it's interesting how you forget how you know dark those days were. Those days were some dark, something dark. <laughs> he was like, he was remembering when we would drive to Pastor Luke's church and there would be a bunch of, uh, yeah, police on the, right. on the road. And yeah. you were like, we might get arrested tonight. Like, you just didn't know what was happening. We most definitely didn't know that this was going to be, you know, this was going to last two and a half years. We definitely know, didn't know the trajectory that we were going to take during that time. Like, even, even at that point, we were living a totally, we didn't have a church. We were just... What? The things that have happened. It's so it's important true. that it's we true. don't forget. Mm. That's so good. But we've forgotten. We've forgotten about, bring that little Fauci in jail. Like, this dude. You know? Like, it's, 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 an, it's insane to me how people have already forgotten. He should be tried for treason, if, if we're being honest. He should, he should be, be jailed. jailed. Like, um, stated. This is this is something that we just visualize. This yeah. is probably, you know, eventually maybe it'll come to pass if we visualize it enough times, right? But at the end of the day, you know, my golly, how we have forgotten. And, but no, not, not me. Say not me. Not me. I will not forget. And then also, this is like some of the traumas, but by golly, we do forget all the good things too. So I have started like, or I, I last year I started a journal where if the Lord said, goodness and mercy, those are two blessings that are going to follow me every single day of my life, then I, I, I'm going to remember what the blessings were. And let me tell you, week two, I, I already forgot. I got used to the blessing. Somebody had given me a Gucci purse, and, and I had forgotten. And I was like, God, th nothing really happened today. Nothing of importance happened. And then, then Holy Spirit was like, how about that Gucci purse that you got? And I was like, how dare I be so acclimated to the blessing who gave you that then I can't you did wow 
No, for real. She gave it to me. Yeah. So, and, and I had forgotten. What a blessing. And look at me being all. See what I'm saying? You have to remember. You have to remember, guys. Do you want the Fauci to stay up here with us, guys? Everybody's loving the Fauci. That was a Gucci. They person. remember the Fauci. Fauci never left. Somebody yep. said Fauci. Fauci made his way back. He never left, Bella. He's been right here. That was Do you Gucci. remember this guy? Are we, are we also going to forget the conversation we just had? That was Gucci. Remember that? For inauguration of Biden? This is like a dark time in history. <laughs> it's scary right here. It was fun. Let and me tell you. Thing. But it's just how but, all how you look at it. It's but, perspective, and, but right? You, you're not, yeah, I did not forget time, how fun that was. Outside of this building, it was dark. But the moment we came into this building, it was fun as heck. I remember driving home after second news and like and just seeing how empty it was and like telling myself, what are you talking about? Where's your dad work? <laughs> exactly. I gotta talk to my mind. Yeah, you gotta you gotta train yourself, bro. No, it was like it's it was Gucci in the office. It was all Gucci in the office. Oops, I just locked myself out of Amina's um, iPod, and she left. So um, these are the days that we're living in, and my bad. So these guys, are the days. don't don't forget, don't don't be like Mags and forget all of the blessing, all of the blessings that are being bestowed upon you even now. Okay, so what is what what the heck are we getting at? You can get rid of One Bernie, of reasons, or at least put him next to Fauci over here. One of the reasons, oh here, yeah. does he like him there? First of all, this metal chair is fabulous. This this is a great product. <laughs> took two years to make. Sorry. Took two years to make, and then they even got his little purpley, you know, wintry face skin. You know, he's yeah. he fell asleep. He nailed it. Marriage. All right, whoever that was. Um, but the reason why we're talking about this is because I feel as though women in general. We could start with Eve. We forget. We forget about the things that God has done. And I think it's innately in us to forget those things because uh, it's, it's a, it's a God-given trait to a certain degree. We forget about the pain of childbirth. So we have another one. <laughs> because I can tell you right now, if a, no if a male no experienced <laughs> that, it would happen one time, never again. <laughs> the human population would have one child. Yeah. But when it comes to women, we right. forget there's such, a, there's such a rush of joy that comes when you are holding that baby that, you know, it takes a couple of weeks, takes a couple of months. But some people the next year, they're like, I'm ready to have another one. Yeah. You know, we forget. We have a tendency to forget. That's good. That's that's good to, to in in certain areas of our lives. But when it comes to the things of God, when we forget, it's never good. Thank you. It's never a good thing. And and dare I say, we forget in our marriages. We forget great things that have happened mm, I see. in relationships. I see where you're going. In Go your marriage. And all of a sudden, you've made your life what it is right now because you've convinced yourself that things aren't good. Things have never been good. Wait a minute. Things have never been good? What about that first date? What about that first year of marriage? What about like, you know, all of those butterflies in your stomach? What about those times when he went out and he did something that was special to honor you, to love you, to show you that he cares? We forget. We forget. And if we can do that with earthly relationships, you know, somebody gives you a nice Gucci bag and you forget. And you forget. If we could do that with earthly relationships, how much more with God? How much more with God? Guilty. Guilty. So what's interesting is that some people, they, some women forget all of the good stuff and then remember all of the bad stuff. Like in 1963. <laughs> and I think that's also something we have to, as women, climb out of. In fact, when I first got married, I was like, why am I keeping... I almost wanted to take notes. But and exactly like what the, the Bible says, don't keep do. record of wrong. Yeah. 
Um, I was like, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start like a scrapbook of all the things that he offended me with. Let's start with the stuff that he's saying straight from the platform to embarrass me. (laughs) Let's start with that. I've, I've got a couple pages on that. Let's said. let's start there. I remember one time you ironed his shirt and you 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 pressed it too long and <laughs> and the perfect iron mark was on his shirt, but he was sweating so bad that he had to take his shirt off and he it was the only <laughs> it was the only shirt that he had, so he basically was like I was going to keep my jacket on, but I'm sweating too bad. Uh, I apologize and I for just, my wife's yeah. terrible yeah, ironing skills. Ironing skills. She's never done this before. It was a perfect iron mark. It was on the back rib cage on his back like this. Perfect. It was a perfect. I, he, I also washed his uh, white shirt with something red. And so uh, for a while, the only two shirts that he had were pink. <laughs> so he also said that. But it wasn't like a, like a, uh, a nice pink. It was like a spotty pink. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so he also like had to say that. Yeah. But there's a lot of things, you know. And, and you know what? So I was like, I'm going to start a scrapbook because I want fuel. You know what I mean? So the next Didn't time want he wants to, you know, come at me mm. and there's an argument, your girl's going to be like, on page 63, on day, September 4th. 2006. Dude, I know people like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was thinking to myself, I just sat there and I was like, what can I, like, what, what, what else has he done? What can, and then I'm thinking to myself, am I really trying to go back to try to, like, win this fight that we're, we're, we're or this skerfuffle because we don't fight? Just an intense, heated argument where we're throwing our fists into the tables and breaking furniture. Uh, But I was like, am I there? Like, is this what we're doing? That I've got to go back and try to recall and try to remember the things that maybe have offended me before? I was like, hell no. That ain't going to be me. (laughs) I'm not going to be that woman. I'm not going to be that person that has to have a lot, like a big giant list of the woes that have happened and the things that he said and the things that he hasn't done or has done. We're not about that life. We're not doing that. Not here, not now. And so you know what, what happened? I was like, God, and this is an honest prayer and I think every woman should pray it. If you don't wanna be a woman who destroys, let me, t- let me tell you about the woman who destroys. The woman who destroys, destroys her own house. That's you. That's your life that you're destroying. You think you're undoing, like, uh, uh, you know, I'm just making it hard for my husband and everybody should know that I'm, 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 I'm the victim here and you keep destroying your own house. It's, you're destroying your own life. Yeah, it affects the people that are living there, but it also affects you, my love. It affects you. And so when you have these toxic traits, and let me tell you, keeping a record of wrong with with the people that are around you is quite literally going against scripture. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. Are you there? Yeah. Read it. Which which one? Which one? Though I speak in tongues. You want me to start from the beginning? Go ahead. Like Start a, from the like beginning. Like Why a, not? Like we're in a wedding. Go ahead. Though I speak with the... T- okay, you know what? This is a little bit of a... This is my lesson for next week for the kids. Coming of age thing. Don't Don't. What judge version? Me. This is uh, New King James. Are we there? Mm, girl. It's fine. So, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, I have not charity. I am, be, uh, I am become as... Give me another. Give me another version. That ain't it. That ain't it. Guys in the back, 1 Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels That's disrespectful. and have no charity. Give me another version. Give me a new King James. This is a new Give King me a new James. living translation. The new living is probably going to be better. Do you solid here? If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. Next. Yes. I mean, if I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed of all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. This is such a powerful thing. I know. Verse 3. 
If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. Mm -hmm. But what? But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Let me tell you about the sacrificing your body and boasting about it. How many of that, uh, how many people have, have seen that within your own family, within your own uh, eyes, with, with your own eyes, that everyone's, oh, no one helps me out here, and this, and I do this, and I do that, and this, and no one ever gives me any credit, and no one, that is not the right attitude to have. Yeah, I just, uh, yes, true. That's not the right attitude to have. And, and I don't want to hear that. I don't want that coming out of your mouth. I'm the only one that does anything. No one ever helps in this house. Y si yo le fallo. What if I die one day? What if I die one day? What are you going to do? I'm going to cry. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. What do you mean? What it, that, just, just love. Your whole purpose in life is to love. Yeah, I know, Nicole. The whole Nicole, motive is Nicole, to love. I know. That's... She's what she unraveling <laughs> some things. That's literally my mother. That's what she said. Nicole, this not, I mean, I'm not saying that, mom, if you're watching. Although this was definitely something that you did. But that's moving on. Go, go, quick. Go. Give me another one. Give me another verse. Let's continue. Let's continue because there's more. Because it's all about the, the oh, look, you're, you're, you're. It's still all, it's all I, about I, the, look what the I've presentation. Done. It's not about it. It's about It's like, your look motivation. at me. I, I'm, I'm wearing sweats. I, all I've done today for the t past 12 hours is laundry. You it's all for nothing. Nobody gets help. I, and this, that, Do you want a pat on the back? Love is patient and kind. It's not jealous or boastful or proud. Verse five. Mm -hmm. Or rude. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody underline that. You know. Um, it is not rude. <laughs> Ladies. It's not, see, the Remember, thing is. Remember, we are a work the in thing progress. Is, it's, it's not what work. you said. It's how you said it. It's how you said it. And you came off rude. rude. And you know you came off this rude. Is, and you, that was a calculated attack against your husband this morning. Because you wanted him to feel some kind of way. Didn't you? Oh, my answer. Love isn't rude. Somebody was like, oh, my God. Love isn't rude. The motivation behind what you do shouldn't be so that everybody can be like, wow, you're such a great mom. You're such a good, wow, look it. I'm, I'm, I'm a mom, and I have everything going on, and I'm so perfect. Who cares? <laughs> that is not the motive. The motive isn't to get likes on Instagram. That shouldn't be the motive. The motive is not so that you can get a cool photo op of your children at your birthday and say, look what I did for my kid. Look, ooh, big. Look at what an awesome mom I am. That's not, that's not the, that's not, that should not be the motivator for life. Do stuff in secret. Bring anonymity back, bro. Bro. For real. <laughs> Bring sacredness and privacy back to the, to, 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 you know, our day-to-day -day things and, and special moments. Not everything has to be documented. I know. I just read a really good quote on that this morning. So it's not rude. It doesn't demand its own way. This is speaking to somebody here today. Yes. It doesn't demand its own way. Well, if, the, well, if that's not going to happen, I'm not going to do it. Well, if I don't have it this way, then I can't. No, I'm not, I'm not going to go to your mom's house today. But you said you would. Well, I don't feel like it. Because I had to do laundry today. And you said that you were going to pick up milk and you didn't. Mm -hmm. So it's just you're demanding. You're, and I'm just, I'm trying to bring this into the micro because too many people have it like, oh, well, I'm not, that, it's not that bad. But it's, it, that's how it starts. I know. It's the little tiny little things that you allow to permeate your relationship. And then all of a sudden, five years goes by and you're like, I'm just not in love. Get, get out of here with no, that mess. Right. Son of a get, the, get the H out of here. Yes. Uh -huh. I wish I could curse so that you could just like uh, snap out of nope, it. Nope, we're not going to. But we're not. But I feel like it. Bring it back. It's not rude. It doesn't demand its own way. Yeah. It's not irritable. It's not irritable. It's not irritable. It's not irritable. <laughs> and it's not irritable. It's not irritable. It's not irritable. Huh? Well, it's just that time of the month. And 
Does that give you, is that time of the month now uh, 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 permi uh, permission to treat everybody like garbage mm. and everybody avoids you? Nobody wants to get near you? Thank you. That's all you have to do in the morning. <laughs> and everybody just stays away from you. All you said was, <sighs> and everyone's like, bye. They done left. They, they left. Did. Everybody knows the signs. Everyone. Everyone does. <laughs> I'm fine. That's it. Yeah, no. I'm That's out. all you did. You That's all you said, is everything okay? And you said, I'm fine. You know, this doesn't even have to be with, with your, your spouse. It's your friends. It's the like coworkers. It's coworkers. Dude. It affects yes. everything. Yes. The moment I see that, it's that's I'm it. staying away from you. And Facts. make no mistake about it, I'm also calculating. How can I not work with you ever again? Dang, dude. Because I don't, I don't want to have to walk on eggshells and see which you version I've got today. 100%. Get out of that. And, and that has everything to do with self-control. That's it. You should not treat people like garbage just because you're in that kind of a mood. That's it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't treat people, uh, you know. Because it just doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. It really it's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a pubescent teen. Now I'm, I'm, I have my monthly cycle. Now it's, uh, you know, I'm hormonal because of X, Y, Z. I'm Im stressed. Emotional imbalance. I'm so stressed. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, like, I'm just really stressed. I've got, you know, eight kids. And, I'm and menopausal. I have to go uh, to it's, just, it just, it's never ending. There's always an excuse as to why this can, should enable you to act like a baddie fatty. It's. Don't be a baddie fatty. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's true. Because it just doesn't stop. If you control your behavior as a teenager, then you'll be, you'll be golden. You'll be golden when, you know, all of the other, you know, phases of life happen. I mean, I just, I, like, if you can treat Don't coddle your teenage friend, daughter, too. It's like, like oh, she's, she's emotional because she's, you know, she just got her. She, it's look. just, you know, it's like, she's, no. like, so stressed out. Yeah, I'm like, if I you don't, try I that even, again. I don't even do that with Cam. I'm I like, are you in a bad mood because you're, you're tired? You. Go I, to bed right now. No it's doubt. It's 3 p.m. Yes. I don't care. You will regret it. Because I'm not, I don't even make allowances for a terrible attitude. No. <laughs> even if they have, like, a cause for it. You didn't get enough sleep you filled the test no thank someone you said something negative if somebody says something negative that's not my fault i didn't say no nothing negative to you no so don't take no, it out on didn't. me i have put that in camila i don't care if you're tired i don't care if you're hungry those things do not uh uh matter when it comes to treating people with with dignity and love and respect just because you've had like a, a crazy week is okay to just be complaining and uh, yeah, I don't know. Just just being like a like a puss. Get out of here yeah. with that. Also, you you are more <coughs> inclined to enjoy victim mentality because you've you associate that kind of, you know, attention, right? With something positive. And it <coughs> lots becomes, of women do that. And it becomes lots an addiction. Of women do that. It becomes that, lots addicting. Of women do that. <laughs> so then all of a sudden it's like, "Oh, I'm crying in a corner." Because I can't control my emotions because I'm it's month right. time or I'm right. menopausal or whatever. I'm and it's and, and that's when people pay attention to me, like, are you okay? Are you okay? Right. You know, it's just it's so unhealthy. It is to make room for this kind of behavior. So and don't you're be cultivating rude. that kind of um, atmosphere for the children that you are raising. Mm -hmm. And you're giving them like a green light. Go ahead and do this. When things get bad, it's okay for you to go batty. It's not okay for you to Can go Can I read this in the Amplified? It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It's not rude or unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. So that's the true, like indicator if you're really walking and operating in God's love is that you don't care if you get your way or not. You don't care how you feel. You put all of that craziness to rest. Right. And then you allow the love of God to surface, That's to come it. right back up. That's it. Because how many, again, how many times are we going to have an excuse as to why we're down or why we're depressed or why we treat people poorly, et cetera, et cetera, and not really 
allow the love of God to just kind of like usurp those things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <clears throat> insane. It's really the reason why the world is the way it is right now. Yeah. Because Cause it's self-seeking. Women, it's self-seeking. The, 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 the father is now absent from the home to try to correct that kind of terrible behavior. And because the mother has spearheaded it, everything becomes emotional emotionally driven so it's like if you feel bad if you feel sad cut yourself drink smoke yourself into oblivion if you're angry throw fists mm -hmm. be be violent all of these things are cultivated in an atmosphere where feelings lead correct where the bible is what should lead us correct. the truth of god's word yeah. we have to be principally driven instead exactly. of emotionally driven and let me tell you that that's good. It's good both ways. When things are good, you're you're principally driven. When things are bad, you're principally driven. But it it keeps you nice at a steady. at a nice steady keel. Yeah. right. So we're we're not going up and downs and like oh it's just like hi you're not you're no like you're not bipolar when you're when you're happy you're really happy and you're like you know whatever and then when you're sad you're you're no one hears from you and you're talking just about bipolar it also continues on for it's not self seeking it's not touchy or fretful or resentful so it's not touchy it's like and people who are just on the cusp of like the bipolar thing it's just like you never is it shackle is it hide right what is who are yeah. you. But you have full control over that. You do. You do. And that is the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. For those of you that are more emotionally driven, <clears throat> you, can, you can get out of that by just being principally driven and get out of your emotions and say, hey, what, would, what does the word of God have to say to this? What would, what would uh, you know, if, if I was speaking to God and I, I understand his word, how would he do it? That's, that's the righteousness of God. It's just doing it the way God would do it. And we are the righteousness of, of, of God. So we can walk these things out because we have the mind of Christ. Amen. So when, when we do have those problems, good and bad, it's like, this is all encompassing because uh, for maybe there is an absent father, right? You want to, as a mother, not put in your children, especially the, the, the men or the boys of the family, that it's okay to lash out if you're angry, right. that it's okay to, you know, just be emotionally driven. So what do you do? You take it back to the word of God and, and you stick with the word of God. If the, the, the Bible says, be angry and sin not, you could be angry, son, but we're not going to throw fists. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to discipline you. Whether whether it's anybody's fault or not, that you have to you have to let the word of God drive you. Yeah. In everything that you do, especially disciplining your children. I don't know how we're getting here, but here we are. Uh, <clears throat> but love, as Mags was saying, keep reading. But God's love, it's not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecoming. Love, not God's rude. love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it's not self seeking. I'm not reading. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, and it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It pays no attention. To a you know, you can get that though. You wrong. can get there. You can get there. You can get I, like, to the point. You, I, I'm not. To... I'm not perfect at this. <laughs> I I am you not have to perfect. Train yourself. But you absolutely can train yourself to be like you're having a bad day. See you later. It's just the older I get, and maybe it's also another coming of age thing. But it's I see things more as a mother with her children. Where it's like that person is behaving that way because they're 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 not matured in who they are, and so I can literally be looking at a fifty year old man and be like, "You're you're immature. I will not take into consideration this fault for right, you, right? Because you have a lot of learning to do." That was never the case early on in my in my life. I felt like, you know, if somebody did me wrong, then I'm gonna do you a double wrong. I'm gonna do you <laughs> double dirty. But now you understand that. People just need to mature. And yeah. it's just like, and, and you do, even, even as a spouse, when you have a spouse, wow, it, it is a gift to just forget. 
And that's where when I was it comes to this in the these, beginning. These <clears throat> well, let's keep going because have we gotten uh, for no record of wrong? It takes mm-hmm. no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffering wrong. Yeah. So that's the amplified uh, version. But another version says it takes no record of it wrong. No record Look of at this. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. So even if you did suffer <laughs> through whatever w- happened, it pays no attention to you it. You want to know something? This is so good because. When somebody, when somebody, ha- like, uh, when a husband commits adultery in a marriage, it is of the utmost importance for that woman to forgive if they want to continue on with the marriage. So they have to have, clearly, it has to be a mutual decision to move forward. If that woman does not let that thing go, it will be poison to her physical body, to her children, to her marriage. It's just, it's almost like at that point, if you know you're not going to get over this, if you know you're not going to forget and you're not going to make a concerted effort to look past this and ask the Lord to shine down his for kind of forgiveness, <laughs> yeah. um, then, then you ought to just bounce up out of the, the marriage. 100%. 100%. Fat, straight, straight back. It pays no attention to the wrong. And you know what? And, and sometimes we need, get, we need help. We need help with this. Sometimes? All the time. You know, especially if, if that's the kind of wrong that you've experienced. Maybe it was, but why do you keep bringing it up? You know, you know, the word says the, the complete contrary. If he doesn't sleep around or whatever, or he slept with your best friend, secretary, and then all of a sudden you, you, you're, you're feeling some sort of way and you bring it up every single time to get him mad and to ruffle his feathers. Help us, Lord. Help you're doing us. you're doing quite the opposite of what this. This is the power of knowing what's in here too, because a lot of people wonder where anxi- why they're they're suffering with anxiety, well, why they have a life that's like you know a, in disarray, and you can't even you don't even understand these kinds of things. That's true. Mm-hmm. Where the Lord Himself told you, listen, you want to operate with with the God kind of love, then yeah, this is what you ought to do. But yeah. you don't do it, and then you you reap a harvest for not doing it. That's it. That's it. So do me a favor. If that's you, would you just knock it off? God. Stop it. <laughs> Nobody needs to be rehashing. He, sl- he slept with another woman 30 years ago. I'm not minimizing your pain. What I am doing is bringing you back to this 2024, present time. You're helping us. God, You're please. Help. Keep at it. Keep please, at your it. kids don't need this. Just keep saying it. They've yeah. heard this story 700 times. Wow. They're not, you're not the only one that suffered through it either. Mm. Please, stop. Stop. Do us all a favor. Shh. Get over it. Get over it. Look at me. Look at me. Get over it. Get over it. That's all right. Good. That's good. Put it to rest. You're helping us. Don't bring it back up again. As far as the East. That's what that I mean. People people don't understand the kind of love God has for us. Mm-hmm. But if you knew, mm-hmm. you'd understand. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far. It, I thought that was a guitar started playing. In there. Know, as far as the east, east is from, from the west. west. But that's how far you should remove that transgression. Because let me tell you, the bitterness only affects you. Oh, he's over it. That's the way guys are. He's over the nonsense. He forgave himself. You're the one bringing it back up again. Right? We understand now that stress start, actually starts in the brain. And what does stress do? It Fs you up, fatty. That's what it does. You know? You, 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 can't, you can't lose weight. Why? Because you got so much stress hormones up in, in your body. Huh? You can't sleep at night. Your body can't recover fully. Because you're just stressed to the nines. But you did it to yourself because you keep thinking about it. And then your brain doesn't even recognize that what, what's real from fake. Did you know that? So every single time you relive it, it's like your body is going through it all over again. All the same traumas over and over again. You wonder why you got migraines. Dang. Let it go, Elsa. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't pick it up again. Don't do it, all right? It's time to move on. You know what I mean? Don't be a baddie fatty, you know? No? Don't. Wrong. 
Now Ron Listen, got a hold of this. You got you got this. Because let me tell you, if you can train any kind of muscle, you can train your brain. All right? I'm not a slave to my mind. You're helping us. My mind is a slave to the word of God. Wow. That's what you need to understand. Let it go. Don't bring it back up again. All right? She was ugly anyway. <laughs> she was ugly anyway. You, you look better than her. But just don't bring it back up again. Okay. All right. Come here. Come here. Hang on. Come here. Virtual hugs. Wow. That's her face. That was good. You know what? Somebody needed that, Max. Somebody needed that. They did. All right, take it. Take it from here. No, I, I feel like I don't have to say it. Yet. Rejoice. It's time to rejoice. It's time to rejoice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mags is going in. She's going in, Mags. Get it, 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 Mags. You got the sneakers. Get it. Slam dunk. Slam dunk. Shower it. Shower it. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. She is, y'all. She is that good. She is that good. Wow. Come on. <laughs> She's like, she was looking for help from. <laughs> Rom, you can't keep it on that long. Rom, <laughs> she was her eyes. Rom. Her eyes were desperately. By now, <laughs> Rom, you should know. If I give you the look, yeah, you gotta <laughs> cut the me. music because she's she's committed. She's committed. Wow, that was good. That was a word. Yeah. Even though it's about the women who forget. Even though this is about the woman who forgets, mm -hmm. kind of took a turn because there's certain things we should remember. Certain things we should forget. That's it. That's true. Wow. <sighs> mm, that's good. All right, go on. So where do we make that that kind of like line? Where do we where do we say, hey, I'm trying? Well, anything that is going to dampen your mood, anything that's going to leave you in a state of bitterness, follow the vein all the way through. Follow that track till the final destination. Is this going to bring me joy? Is this going to bring me peace? Is this going to bring me fruit, good fruit that I can partake of? If the answer is no, we ain't getting on this train. We're Next stop, I'm off this plane or uh, off this train. I'm off of the track here. Because I no longer want to participate in trying to remember things that are going to lead me astray, that are going to lead me away from the call of God in my life. If that's a thing, you got to nip it in the bud, ladies and gentlemen. You can't do that. You can't allow yourself to dwell and meditate on things that are going to cause you pain in the end, that are going to destroy your family. And in the same way, you can't allow yourself to forget about the good things. You can't allow yourself to forget about those beautiful memories. And how about this? Forgetting about what God has done in our lives. How many of us have taken into account what God has done just in the month of January? Like Mags was saying, and it could be like the littlest things. I wish that you would make it a habit of yours to start writing things down. And I know like, you know, journaling sounds gay or whatever. And it's like, oh, I don't want to journal. But 
That's what you ought to be doing. You should take a piece of paper, send a text message, remind yourself of the like wonderful things that God has done for your life. I, I was sick and now I'm healed. Look at that. Uh, you know, I wanted this promotion and now I have it. You know, there's so many people and I've seen this with my own two eyes. They've been praying about a situation. I want this job. I want this job. Then they get the job and they're miserable in the job because they forget how quickly we forget about the goodness of God. You've forgotten, sis. You've forgotten, my brother, about the things that God has done in your life. And that's the reason why it's a slow demise. It's a slow, uh, uh, you know, uh, downward spiral. And, and you don't understand that this is all about you, your mindset. The reason why your marriage isn't working is because at some point you decided to harbor the offense you decided to focus and meditate on the things that were said and done instead of doing what you should have and forgiving that individual, forgiving your husband and saying, you know what? He had a toothache or whatever. And let me tell you, and I've said it here before, one of the first prayers that I ever prayed when I married Jonathan was so that I wouldn't like see, I, I didn't want to manifest that in me because I know it was in me to try to keep the record of wrongs. And then, you know, in six years, I'm, ne I'm never going to allow myself to forget what you said here. And I'm going to bring that up in conversation and I'm going to make you feel bad because that's the whole point. I want to make you feel bad. I want to win this fight. But you know what? When you're fighting with your spouse, it's like fighting with yourself. You are slowly bringing your house down to ruin because you just what? Because you want to win a, 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 a conversation, a fight. You just want to win it. You want to be right. Okay, so now you're right and he feels bad. And there's no joy. You suck the joy out of the house. There's turmoil in the house. The kids don't even want to be around you right now. But you won the, 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 the argument. Good for you. You've made, you feel good? It doesn't matter. So why not, if you understand, and when I start engaging in this kind of fight, in this kind of bickering, in this kind of complaining about the things that he hasn't yet done, it, it's, it's, it, it changes the atmosphere. And God doesn't want that. Look at this in Jeremiah 7, 22. For in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I didn't speak to your fathers or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices, but this command I gave them, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk in all the way that I command you that it may be well with you. But they didn't obey or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsel and stubbornness. Put yourself in that situation. I know I do. That's why I'm, mira, yo estoy derechita. Mm, the, the word of God will always keep me straight. Because I know when I'm wrong. Uh, the Holy Ghost lives in me. If I say something that offended my husband, not that you can say anything that offends him, but hurt his feelings, if I said something to hurt my husband's feelings, I, I feel a check in my, in, in, in my spirit. The Holy Ghost put that there because I asked him to check me. Every time I would say something that would hurt his feelings. Anything that, that, that would uh, start causing me to um, lose peace in my home. I want to get in that argument for what? I said, Holy Ghost, check it. He checks it. I stop it. I don't, I don't entertain. Yep, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I just diffuse the whole situation because it's not worth it for me. The, the peace in my home is much too uh, priceless. It's priceless. It, it, it's, it, it's, and I'm not going because I want to win an argument or be right about a situation. I'm not going to forsake the peace in my home, the joy in my home for a, a, an argument that I win. No, I don't, I don't care. I don't, that is, uh, the, the peace is just, is, 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 I hold it too high in value. I esteem it too much to try to lose it because of some dumb crap. And so it's just interesting. He said, look, they didn't obey and they, they wanted to walk in their own counsel. How many of us have another voice counseling us out of our marriages? 
Y'all, you got to take heed. You got to, who are you surrounding yourself? First of all, you're listening to Tracy. And Tracy has been in four different marriages and is telling you that you deserve better and you should walk away from it. What is going on? Why are you listening to Tracy? That's a third voice. Why not speak to your husband and say, I didn't like the way you said that. You made me feel bad. Why not put yourself out? Oh, we don't want to be. No, you got to do you. See, we've, we've taken this weird turn in, in the United States that we no longer even want to talk about the situation because we're going to do us. And if you feel that's right, you got to do, you got to move and, and, and do it the way you feel to do it. No, don't do it the way you feel to do it. That's actually the opposite of what I'm trying to tell you right now. Live a principled life. Live according to, to, to the mandate uh, of the word. And look at this is what ticked God off. He's like, I told them after everything they saw coming out of Egypt, I set provision for them. I loaded them down with silver and gold. So they were walking in the wilderness like they were Mr. T. In the, in the, in the morning, a pillar of cloud led them. By night, a, a pillar of fire. I mean, supernatural. We, we, they, the sea parted. Do you guys remember that? The sea parted. And you guys walked on dry land to the other side. And then when the army, the Egyptian army came in after you, I sunk them. They drowned in that water. So it's just, it's, 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 it's crazy that the people of God would, would forget. And he's saying, all I asked you to do was obey. Why? Because when you obey the commands of the Lord, when you structure your life around the word of God, guess what happens? Peace, joy, fulfillment, success. You stay in the straight and narrow. You stay in the way that you should go. You're not going to veer to the left. You're not going to veer to the right. You're going to stay on course. You're not going to be swayed by how hungry you are. You just want some leeks. What? You want leeks? Should have just died in the Egypt. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the pain? I don't care what you say. That must have hurt God's heart. That you have some foolish, foolishness happening with your people, that you don't take them out of complete turmoil and, oh, yes, yeah, slavery, and they want to go back for some leaks. Is that where we're at right now? And you know how stupid that is? And so many of us fall into the same freaking trap. You've been praying for that husband for so long, and then you're in it, you're married two years, and you want a divorce. What? You wanted that job. You've been praying for it. And now you're like, eh, I just don't feel like they like use me enough. And I just don't, I don't think that they see the gift that I am. Like I thought I'd be further along than what I am right now, even though I really want to be here. Um, I just, I think my time is short here because I just don't think the leadership here understands me. Just nonsense. And why is that? It started because you wanted to feel a certain way. You felt salty, and now you want to follow that train to its final destination, which is absolutely nowhere. And that's what offense does. If you harbor offense in your heart, you're 100% wrong every single time. Every decision you make out of an offended heart will always lead you down the wrong path. And let, make no mistake about it. Once you get on that train, you have to make those decisions on that, that train that's leading you nowhere. So every decision you make after that is wrong. It's, it's done in error. And then people wonder, what the heck happened in four years? How did we get here? How, how does it, why does it feel like I'm, I have to restart again every year from ground zero? I'm trying to build something. I'm trying to do something and I can't make it grow. I can't take it off. Why does it always feel like there's holes in my basket? Why does it always feel like I can't move forward? Why does it always feel like I can't really uh, uh, do everything God's called me to do? There's always kind of like a restriction. You, you did something in offense. And then every decision you made, because you didn't go back and make it right. And that's another lesson you got to learn in life. If there's unforgiveness, you got to go back to that place and forgive that person. Or else nothing else is going to work for your life. Merry Christmas. Nothing else is going to work 
until you make it right. That's just, you know what? That's a principle found in God's word. You, I don't even want what you have to offer. If you've got an offering for me, put it, put it on the altar. But if there's a heart, like a hardness of heart or bitterness on forgiveness in your heart, go ahead and ask your brother for forgiveness before you present anything to me. Because this is, I won't accept that until you make your, your heart right. How do I know that? Because the Bible says that anybody who doesn't love a, a, a brother or sister, they, there's no way that they love me because I am love. So if you can't exude love to your brothers and sisters, let alone your uh, people in your family, your mom, your dad, your husband, your wife, we're not, we're not, we, we're not playing with the same rules here. And I think that most people identify this um, or, or most people have this kind of, um, uh, they've orchestrated this game that they play. And it's my rules, according to what the word of God says, this, is, this happens a lot. Uh, you want to play by your own rules. You want to make your own um, decisions uh, outside of the word of God. You want to be offended. You want to walk in, 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 in offense or whatever it is. And here it just says, look, they walked in their own counsel. They were stubborn. They had evil hearts. And they went backwards and not forwards. That's what the word of God says. Jeremiah 7, 22 through 26. So you want to play by your own rules and you're going to, uh, uh, you're going to reap whatever it is you've sown. And, and let me tell you, anything done in your carnality always leads to death. That's a scripture. But if you do things birthed out of the spirit, out of the word of God, because the word of God is, is a spirit, huh? It's, 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 it's alive and it's well. It is a spirit. This, this word is actually something that will, uh, help you benefit in life. I don't know if that's like a, the correct um, sentence structure, but you, you feel me. You, you know what I'm saying? So it says that, look at this, and, and all I said was obey my voice and I'll be your God and you shall be my people. And not only that, walk in all the way that I've commanded you, that it might be well with you. That's all. I'm, all I'm saying is I've, I've given you all of this. All that's required of you is that you obey my voice. And then you walk it, 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 walk it out the whole way that I've commanded it. Not just a little bit here and there. Well, she kind of pissed me off. And so now I'm like, I'm just, I don't want to talk to her right now. It's been six months. And I just, you know, until she comes at me. No, obey the commands and walk it out the whole dang way. Or else you're not going to be well. It is not going to be well with you. Get, look, look at the, the next um, scripture here. It says, but they wouldn't listen to and obey me or bend their ear or incline their ear to me. But follow the counsel and the stubborn promptings of their own evil hearts and minds. And they turned their backs and went in reverse instead of forward. That's ugly. And this is the, the, the I want to say the woman who forgets. This is the individual who forgets. This is the person who forgets. You go in reverse instead of forward. Say what? Why? Because you didn't want to walk it out the whole way. See, the thing with God is that it's all or nothing. You do it his way and you reap the reward or you don't and it doesn't happen and you don't reap the reward. It's very easy. Well, I kind of did it like I, you know, I, I started to apologize, but then it kind of escalated. So I, you know, punched your face or something. And so it's like, okay, so now there's a court hearing and you got arrested and now you got a record. See, the thing is that you, you may have started, but you didn't fully walk it out. So what happens? You don't benefit from the good things that God had in store for you. See, the thing is with the Israelites, they forgot. They forgot about all of the stuff that God had done for them. Don't be that person who forgets. And you know what? Whatever you might be struggling with right now, it's because you've forgotten what God has done prior to today. You've forgotten. That house, God gave you that house. That job, God gave you that job. 
That husband, that wife, those children, God gave you those things. You, God spared your life. The, the fact that you're even here praying. God, God's hand was on your life. And we forget. And we totally forget. And you know what? What a sad day it is. Look at this. And they went backward and forward. From the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt to this day, I have persistently sent all my servants, the prophets, to them day after day. Yet they didn't listen to me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. So you see how this is like now we're going into generations after, where if you allow this behavior to fester in your home, it's going to continue on the next generation where they forget God. I wish that every morning you would just put into remembrance the things that, that, that God has done. And you know what? When we take communion, we put him into remembrance. And that's the reason why he even instituted. Because we have a tendency to forget. Do this often in what? In remembrance of me. So that you don't forget what my son did on the cross. All right, I did, I did that in, in, in Egypt. But don't you dare forget about what my son did on the cross for you. It should not take Easter to come around for you to begin to meditate and dwell on the wonderful things that Jesus has afforded you. Healing, joy, salvation, forgiveness, freedom. It shouldn't take you to Easter for you to just cry at the passion and be like. <laughs> Every day you should be overcome with gratitude that Jesus, you did that for me. That, was, that should have been me. But you took my place because you loved me. Love motivated you. John 3, 16. So what a powerful thing it is to put things into remembrance. And forget the things that are necessary to grow. Huh? Huh? But too many of us, and I'm saying about the woman who forgets the good. You forgot about how he made you feel. So now all of a sudden you feel salty about the marriage. You want a different guy. The different guy's going to be worse. You're going to attract something way, somebody way worse. And then you see, go, go talk to the masses of women that have been divorced several times and see if the second and third marriage worked out. It didn't. It didn't. So why quit? Why give up? God can restore God can make something brand new. He's good at that. Look at you. You were in, in, in some kind of form, and then you met Jesus. The blood of Jesus came on you, and he transformed you, and he created something brand new. We were just talking about it at lunch yesterday. There's no way you can really change as a person unless Jesus gets in there. Unless Jesus is in a person's heart, that person can't truly change. That, that, that's, you, you generally are the way you are, you know, as a kid. Your personality already develops by the age of five. And you don't really change much after that. You learn. You might not learn. But who you are is already innately inside of you. But let me tell you, when Jesus gets a hold of your heart, everything changes. The Bible says that he makes you brand new, a new species of being. A brand new person. And it's evident because there's certain things that we've done in the past that it's like watching a movie. And you're like, was that me? Did I do that? I would have never. And there's some, some people that you meet and you're like, you, were, you did what? You, you were an addict? What? You were in jail? What? And, and you're just blown away about like what God did because only God could change that person. Do you think if God can do that to us, he couldn't get in that marriage, he couldn't get in your home, he couldn't get in your finances? Of course he could. So don't give up. Don't call it quits. Put into remembrance the good. Everything God, good God did. All of those prayer requests that you've prayed in the past that you're now walking and you're right in the middle of it. Like, why, why all of a sudden are you uh, uh, overwhelmed with this house? It's just so much cleaning. There was a point where you were begging God for a, a, a house. And all of a sudden the, the house is just overwhelming you and you just don't know. It's just too much. First world problems that you're complaining about the, the maintenance of a house. What? Where's I, people, Mags left. She had to go pick up her husband. But people just don't, 
People don't get it. People don't understand the blessing that you're in right now. You don't get it. And, and I wish that we could go to the places that I've been. I wish that we could go to Uganda, to the refugee camp. I wish that I could take you there so that you could see what that looks like. And then you can come, come back home. In fact, I came back home, and Camila at that point was like four or five. And I remember coming home and like just, uh, she, she met us in New York with Mags. And I remember just wrapping my arms around her and I was just so thankful to God for my little bear. I just grabbed hold of her and I was like crying, okay? I'm just, just, I don't wanna like, but I cried. And then uh, a week later, she started complaining about a toy. And that was it. And that was a wrap. I was like, I'm sorry? <laughs> you know, I was just like, PTSD. I was like, are you complaining about a toy? Is that what we're doing at four years old? When you got a, a, an entire room, you've got, an, you've got like a, a, a toy store in your room, you're complaining about a toy that you didn't get? That was the last time she complained about a toy, I can tell you that much. Because you got to see a thing. You got to experience a thing. When you experience those things, and maybe some of you guys did, maybe you guys were raised up in a poor household. Now you've got it all and you're still complaining. Ugh. Check your heart. Check your heart. Don't forget the things that God has done for you. Look back. You were a messed up, ugly person inside and out. And the Lord softened your features and made you beautiful both inside and out. I just wish more people would, would, would take the time to put God in remembrance and say, man, you've, I've got it really good. And you know what? If you didn't do anything at all for me from this moment forward, I'd still owe you a thousand lifetimes to say thank you for all the things you've saved me from, me and my family. I wish that you would just change your mindset. It's not that bad. It's that things could be a lot worse. Fíjate, things could be a whole lot worse. Don't forget. Don't forget. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are watching uh, now and in the broadcast, the reruns and the podcast and everything else. Father, I pray that this would have spoken something in, in them that would completely eradicate, obliterate every kind of, of uh, nonsense that would try to hold us back because of ingratitude. Uh, problems that occur because we've forgotten about how far you've taken us. From this moment forward, I pray that that would never happen again. That any time we'd have a complaint, any time we'd have something that we're, we're, we're asking you to change, that we would remember that day that we prayed for those things that we're in now. Health. We're finally in health and all of a sudden, oh, this isn't. And when we focus it on some other kind of stupid thing. Let us never be that person that forgets the good that you've done, the, the good that you've done, the good that other people have done. Let us never forget the good that we've experienced in our life in Jesus' name. And help us to forget, help us to uh, forget those things that people have done harm in our lives, those, those motives and those reasons where people have done harm in our life and brought sadness into our lives. Let us forget that. Anything that leads us astray, anything that leads us into bitterness or unforgiveness or, or depression, help us forget that. But help us never to forget the good. Help us never to forget how far you've taken us from. In Jesus' name. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you've never made a commitment to serve the Lord, I want you to do that right now. Serve him now, we're talking about God making you brand new. He could do that for you right this second. Say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of my life. He died on the cross, but rose again on the third day to die a criminal's death because he loved me. He rose up from the dead and broke the power of sin over my life. I am forgiven. I am set free. I'm a child of God. 
in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, I want you to go to revivaltoday.com and uh, click that link, and we want to send you a Bible because you need the Bible. You need help. You need to live uh, according to the law. You need to live according to the truth found in God's word, and it'll keep you on the straight and narrow. I promise you. Today starts a brand new life, and there's, there's, there's nothing better. Uh, and if you want to sow, I want to open this up for anybody who feels uh, impressed to give. These are the ways to give. You can give through Cash App, Venmo, revivaltoday.com forward slash PayPal. You can follow us um, on Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, you could do hashtag donate, follow the prompts as well. Go to revivaltoday.com forward slash give if you want to partner with this ministry, which I encourage you to do because Gloria Copeland says consistent giving is consistent harvest and consistency is key. Consistency is power.